Yeah, so these are two. This one is one, this one is the big. Smallest one. And the, the leaves are, so like this is very firm and this is more pliable. Yeah, but these are herbs. You can cook with it. The last night in the bathroom. in Jamaica I knew I wanted to be around people so at age 15 I I wouldn't say worked volunteered at two spaces one into a boutique that had a sewing room in the back so people get custom clothing made and the other was at a beauty salon that I would answer the phone on the weekends and they were two best friends, so I alternated between both of them. And so I got to see the best of both worlds. What it meant for women to feel good, look good. But I wasn't even thinking that that's something that I wanted, right? I, I just wanted to be in that space around these amazing women. I've known Kay, I don't know, maybe 15 or more years. I knew Kay when I had dreadlocks down to my butt. <laughs> it feels different than any other hair salon that I've been to growing up. Like it's, first of all, she's the only stylist. Like it's very like calm in there. All of her plans it brings a very, um, sort of like a sense of grounding to the appointment. So I went to UConn. The mother was in New Haven. So we were at, we were in Nesby, National Society of Black Engineers. We do our conferences every year and we were getting for a conference. The mother had put, put a bunch of girls in her car and draw us from campus down in New Haven to get our hair done. Fast forward, when I came here to now live, um, what do I do? Do I work in a factory? Do I go back to school? But you know, going back to school, I had just come, so school wasn't an option. I worked at a clothing store. The way the people left the dressing rooms, girl, that was it. I knew that was not what I was gonna do. So we came down and Kay did our hair and I've been coming ever since. I have lived, wherever I live now, Kay, I lived in all over Connecticut. I have lived in upstate New York. I have lived in Chicago. I have lived in Minneapolis. I have lived in Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> for business school, Ann Arbor. And I always come back to get my hair done. I did our hair for her wedding. Yes, to my, for my mm -hmm. wedding. I worked at a bank, you know, um, wasn't really truly fulfilled. The next thing I saw was like just walking around and interacting with people. People really didn't do hair care. They did a lot of hairstyling. And um, yeah, when, when you got to the crossroads, it was like, okay, I could see myself going to beauty school. And that's what I did. I went to school in Orange. I took the bus to Orange from New Haven. So it wasn't as if to say, I'm going to tell you, like, as a little girl, I used to. No, mm -mm. no, that wasn't it. My passion of being with people, being a support, and realizing that what was happening in Jamaica was not happening here, which was here, here. And her, her emphasis on really improving the condition of your hair um, and her like, holistic focus on you know, how your physical health, like your water intake, your exercise, how that all impacts your hair. Um, I've learned quite a lot about hair care since I've been with hair. It's like life. Like, when you walk in here, this physical space is like, you know, alive with the, the plants and the greenery. Even when you were in the other space that she was in decades ago, it was the color, right? When you walk in the cave space, it's alive, it's vibrant, it's the oranges, it's the greens, it's just this, this warmth that envelops you. And then the space is only a representation of woman. <laughs> so it's the same thing. Kay is just inviting and welcoming and a safe space to be in 
where you can talk to her about the small things in life, the big things in life, and everything in between. Oh my God, I think what I love most about that space, or her space, or any space she is in, um, that she has this uncanny ability to make everybody feel welcome. So when you go there, it's like a traditional black hair salon, that's where people, black women, gather. But she goes one step further because it has not just uh, African-American women, but a heavy Caribbean population, you know. So you get to know Jamaican folks and Dominican Republic folks and Trinidadian and Ghanaian and all these other kinds of folks in one space. In Jamaica on Saturdays and Sundays, you see everybody, most people here in rollers. So like Saturday and Sunday was, was wash day. Right? Um, so people would ha always have their hair in rollers or chiny bumps, which they call bantu knots or plaits. You know what I'm saying? So we didn't have access to a lot of products. The access now is totally different. Back then, the shampoo and conditioner we had was Flex. I don't know, are you, are you familiar with Flex? Girl, I'm telling you. The relaxer that we used to have was Revlon and Jaffrey's. And Jaffrey's was, was, was like Jaffrey's was like straight up caustic soda. We just keep burning and we just kept on going. But that was what we had. But then I would look at the woman's hair. For for the little that we had, people had beautiful heads of hair. And when I came here, you saw a lot more damage. And then, and then you wonder, like, this is America, like the land of opportunity. Why is as you lived it, you start realizing Jamaica we have summer all year our food skin so our food was important the food was important the water was different like all the things we got rest we had the beaches like you had ways to break you know the whole nine and so in in all level of fairness your environment helps to determine the level of care you're gonna give right um, if you work in two three four jobs you ain't got time to be getting your hair done you're gonna do the quickest thing that you could do. But at the time, I was just looking at like, wow, people's edges was gone, you know, stuff like that. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna see that more now because more people are wearing wigs with the glues and the braids and all those and attraction, all the and all that. When I go to the salon, that it kind of just, it like breaks up my day. Like I look forward to when I'm going because we, like she's also very into politics and I study political science. So we like have our little political chats. Um, and again, like being surrounded by the plants and there's just like no one else in the room. It's just us and it's just like the only thing to think about is hair. And it's just a really nice break from, you know, my endless meetings and classes every day. I went to a all white school. So this would be my first introduction to doing Caucasian hair. And that's all we did. Um, when it was time for me to be on the floor, that's when we started having different ethnicities come in. But I remember the first time I took my curl in, you know, the Marcel irons to work. Cause I mean to school. Cause I wanted to learn how to use it. There was nobody to teach you how to use it. So I then had to find a, a senior hairdresser who then became my mentor and she taught me whatever it was that I needed to learn about our hair care. Then and now, totally different. It wasn't abnormal to see blacks in the white spaces and then they use the fact that um, it's supposed to get clinical hours, we're working on the floor and then they can market to black customers. And then as, so even though I had to pay someone else on the outside to teach me how to do black hair, the school benefited from that. It is what it is. I found out that you could come here and get lunch at the Cardinals when you worked at Winchester Factory. Because I was sharing with my clients who are from New Haven, right? And say, so, yeah, and they used to play, they used to have a baseball team and they had a bus that was parked in the back. So this is a lot of history. James Brown performed here. Like, I mean, I was just getting all this information, like, this was really, and then on Dixwell Avenue was the Monterey because on Dixwell Avenue was a lot of jazz clubs and yeah, so I got a whole lot of history. So the pride that I have that I'm able to be in this space, it's, it's, it's an honor.
it's you know like when people walk into the salon and go oh my god i remember when i couldn't i wasn't allowed to come into this club but i used to sneak in and you know and this was the bar this was the bar part of the club right because they had a back room like i've never been in here but when people come in and they start telling you stuff you start realizing you know before they totally finish the basement you used to see like the old in, in the basement downstairs you used to see like all the old um the joints and you'd be like mm, i know you could tell a lot of stories up in here you know that kind of thing but yeah so it's it's really and truly a historical space i personally think that it should be recognized the whole corner like cardinals you know here is cardinals and a little history winchester should have something but that's I do my little part out of everybody they come. Like, did you know that that was just a gun factory? Until someone realizes the value of recognizing that we stand at the beginning and ending of two communities, Dixwell and New Hallville. Now, what does that have to do with here? It's community. <laughs> it's community. This is our community. That's it. Like, who would have known? Like, I'm looking at almost 30 years. Like, I don't really interact with people in the New Haven community, like, ever. <laughs> so that's kind of the one place where I do, and so it's really nice to, like, hear about what they do and kind of, like, what makes them like New Haven. Another thing that I have, like, yet to tap into yet, but that Miss Kay keeps telling me that I should, is that she has, since she's so involved in the community, she knows a lot of people who are, like, local politicians or, like, local, like, activists, community organizers um, that she'd like to introduce me to that I just, like, haven't connected yet, but I think that that's, um, going forward something that I am really interested in and just trying to like understand what is New Haven outside of the Yale bubble. And then when, when so for me now, um, when I graduated, I wanted to work in a particular salon in Stanford. I was very ambitious. I didn't have a car at the time, but I wanted to work in Stanford. And then that's when you start seeing the separation where they're gearing you towards going back into the in, into your community. So I came back into New Haven and I worked, I think like three salons in New Haven. And then I did my first booth rental in West Haven. Um, I had a barber shop. I was there for 20, gosh, I think I was there for 22 years in that same location. And, Cause I'm here for five. I'm in my fifth year and I just renewed my lease for another three years. When I decided to move here, I knew I wanted a boutique salon. I was older, I didn't have that as much patience. I, I didn't have the capacity anymore to hold space for my clients and hold space for someone who may not be necessarily as invested as I am. And so it was just best for me to just work in and on my business between me and my clients in this small, intimate, Space. My in-laws, friends, at the time he kind of like sat me down and I was, you know, he was like, so tell me, he was a, he was a local businessman and he was like, how much are you paying for your rent, da 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 and I explained to him there was a space available beside my in-laws. He was like, you can afford it, and I was like, no, I can't, like, you know, so how much is it? And it, we, I had actually had my first masterclass, business masterclass. Because then he looked at how much I was paying weekly, which at the time was two hundred and fifty dollars a week. So he's like, if you can pay a thousand dollars a month, you can pay rent, <laughs> right? The only thing I didn't, I would say, budget for or had was the startup, how to build out the salon space, and my family then paid for it to be built out. So that's how I got my first one. We've been friends uh, 15 plus years, I think, uh, when she had her place on Blake and Fitch, I believe that's where it was. And, uh, and uh, my friendship followed her to uh, months in Triangle. She has people that come far and wide for her services. Um, so I think she could be anywhere and it would be the same. If she was in West Rock or East Rock or Orange Street or whatever, I think it would still be the same vibe. Everything had to do with um, ease. So that's the first thing. Where is the plumbing? Wherever the plumbing was, that's where the sink was going to be. 
I was not into configuring anything. Because when you're working with limited funds, you have to make it be worthwhile, right? I always thought where, wherever the sink is, and then you then you work out. There's this big like group me of like black graduate students, yeah, and so there's like what about like hair care, and so whenever people like say like who should I go to for hair, I'll like you know upvote the people that say Miss K. So I was going to this one place <laughs> a couple of times that I really did not like, so I was like desperate to find something else. So I was like googling, like looking at every review I could possibly find, like trying to find a better option. Um, so then I found her, and it's been great. No complaints. And hairstylists that I've gone to in the past, and even some others that I've tried in New Haven, like, I almost feel like a burden if I, like, make a request of, like, can you cut my hair this certain way, or, like, do this certain thing. Whereas with Miss K, she's very much, like, whatever you want your hair to look like is what I will do for you, which I think is kind of the right approach for, for hair care. Well, I'm an island girl, and I like plants into the customer's faces, you know? During COVID, I started gathering more plants because plants clean the air and so I just you know like snake plants and all the other ones that's help, gonna help to clean the air and make sure I had those in my space and um, so that's how I ended up with so much this particular plant I've had over 20 years but one of the things that you have to understand as well is there's a connection to plants and hair care <laughs> you have to trim you have to water, you have to fertilize. You gotta talk to them, you gotta be nice to them. You gotta, you know, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes they're a bit extra and they like filtered water. Sometimes I crush eggshells for them. Yeah, they're little divas. But but it's, it's very similar to your hair. So I would always be able to use it as, as an example to customers who tell me that they don't want to cut their hair or trim their hair and I'm trying to say to them well, if, if hair I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to use you okay as an example no matter what nutrient I put in the root because it has to not come to even the dead section it can waste it so if we get rid of it then you know what I'm saying so they're part of my teaching apparatus oh I think when I think my most memorable is when we started playing with color and, uh, and we landed on, I mean, she has colored my hair blue and pink, red, I've been blonde, platinum, and we finally settled on purple for the moment. So we'll see. But purple, it's been a signature purple for the last couple of years. I'm not gonna do something that I can't do. I, I'm not gonna do something that I know is gonna totally damage your hair. I'm gonna tell you the truth and then you decide what you wanna do with it. Yeah, just be me. I talk too much. I ain't gonna remember what I told you anyway, so I'm gonna tell you the truth because if I had to tell a lie, girl, I'm gonna have to remember. Like, what lie did I tell? No, I ain't got time for none of that since we, we all now have access to cell phones. Like, each new client come in, I would really and truly rather start documenting their hair care journey for them. So I'll take their phones, I'll take their pictures. They have it, they see the progress. So that means if I'm telling you something totally wrong and your hair got messed up, then you can see it. They say, well, CK, this was wrong. And then I'm going to be like, but did you follow the directions though? The early days of doing everything like everyone, you know, the freeze curls and all of this and the stiff style and, uh, you know, and I had to make a decision about who I wanted to be as a hairdresser. I just wanted to be the person, the, the stylist that would take care of the client. I started having these very intensive conversations with the amazing women that I serve. And they're very few men, but mostly women. Do it here, you know, my last name is Holness. Like, do you realize your name, what you're doing? And so I just look at it and say, there's no coincidence. God driven, you just be obedient and just follow the path. No questions asked. I wanted I wanted a retirement party. Most of my clients know. All I want is a retirement party. I, I want what everybody who had their career choice had. A retirement. That no longer I'm hanging up my Yeah. <laughs> now I tell him I want to retire. They go, what? You can't. What about me? It's like, uh, <laughs> what about me? Even now there are some amazing stylists. You know, and, and so as 
the old G in the game. We give them what we can. You share the information, help them to become the better version of themselves. And then you sit back and you're just like, we did it. What my plans for whenever I retire with my plans is that my clients will get my plans. You know? Like, yeah. Whichever plan they want as you come out, this final home for them. Whichever one. So if you want one, if you want one of each, you can get one of each. Mm -hmm. But this is, it's kind of like how you keep sharing. I would never just throw them out or, cause they, are, they are a part of hair skate. They are, you know, they are hair skate. Yeah. I have brought my own family here. <laughs> Personally put them in the car. I was like, you're going to see Kay. I come to Kay because I know that like, no matter what happens, she's gonna take care of me. My hair's gonna be the way I like. So I'm gonna walk out this door. I'm gonna be happy. <laughs> oh, I'm at home. It really is home. <laughs> it's home. Even when I come in here and she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I have no clue. Or I come in here and I'm like, cut it all off. We've done it all. I just know that when I walk out this door, I'm going to be happy with how I look and how I feel. And this is going to all come together. And it's just, it's just that, that sense of like comfort and secureness that like, it's going to be okay. No matter what happens, what's going on in life, when you come here and you leave, you get the sense of it's gonna be okay. I mean, it's changed kind of my whole perspective on like on hair care and thinking about it as like a part of my overall health rather than something that I just have to do to like have a certain appearance. Like now it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like incorporated into like a more holistic view of my, my personal health. Okay, because I was like, you need to be online. You need to have a website. You need to be taking pictures. You need to do all this stuff. And if I really think about it, that was my first marketing experience was coming to K's during the summer in one of the first time. Yeah, that was the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I find myself working in marketing. I'm the director of marketing now. It's a lot. Be careful. Don't you know, it's my favorite jeans now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that skill, man. That's what I'm saying. She'll take care of your hair. You got breakage, you got damage, you got whatever. Beautiful. It smells and feels very organic. For me, it's growth. I've grown up with Kay. Yeah. You know? I've and grown up with Kay. And her kids. And she's grown up with me and my mom and my dad. And you know what I mean? And like. And that's when you know your clients are invested in, not just. A good picture. <laughs> well, homecoming, the wedding. The business school thing was what, yeah, both. The birth of both of my kids. <laughs> what, have you, what have you not been around for? Kay, you know, wasn't at the wedding to do our hair. She is a guest. Basically, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we've come a long way. And that's literally like she's always loved our hair. 